Hey, this is Brent Arnold. You may remember me from other tutorials such as creating ad hoc distribution profiles for creating all sorts of cool mobile applications. Today I want to talk about installing your iOS app over Wi-Fi, specifically the idea of deploying it for someone to download from your website uh, for testing or for your own testing. For example, if you are running on a Windows machine, you're using software to build apps and you want to install them easily without having to go through iTunes. So the, the point that I'm showing you is how to install an app over Wi-Fi without iTunes. All right, I'm looking at this website and here it's just the developer library. This is you know, you can get to this uh, without logging in. You, it's just the distributing enterprise apps for iOS 4 devices. So what that means is uh, there's, since iOS 4 came out, there's been the ability to install an app over the air. And all you need to do, you can read through this. This has a lot of good information, but it's fairly straightforward and fairly simple. So uh, if you're installing apps wirelessly, then it talks about, okay, you got to do the app, uh, manifest file and then uh, make sure you're connected to a network and you can do this over your own uh, web server and so what I'm going to show I'm on a Windows machine and I'm using uh, the WAMP server so this is a real simple combination of Apache and PHP MySQL and you can do this you know if you're on a Mac then obviously there's built-in you know website support so you can navigate to that the key is, however you are connecting wirelessly, make sure you know the URL for your uh, website, whether it's a local server or not. So I'm just using the local server. So I have this uh, local directory, and here I have a folder I call builds. And then inside of that, I have an index file, and then I have the manifest file. Now, if I take a look at this website here, again, describing how to do this, the key is you have a wireless, uh, this manifest file, and it has certain uh, information. Uh, when you have the website, you have an index and you're referencing the IPA and the manifest file. So when you reference the manifest file, you have to use this specific uh, URL tag so that when the person on their iOS device they browse to your page and then they can click on a link and install the app. And so it's referencing, notice how it's pointing to the URL. Of course, you want to make sure that it's yours and I'll walk you through that. So this is the link you would have within the index page, right? And then if I scroll down quickly, this is the manifest file. Now, there's a lot of information here and notice a lot of this says required and then a lot of it says optional. I'm going to show you uh, a very slimmed down version of the uh, manifest file without the optional stuff. Now you can use this so you know if it downloads it and you know you have the MD5 hash so you know how big the file is and all sorts of stuff like that. Anyway you can read that on your own but I want to show you the very minimal and quickest way to install over the air. Alright so Let's go back to the folder. I'm going to my builds folder and inside, whoops, I clicked away here. I don't know why I did that. Let's just back that up. Anyway, so I'm looking at my builds folder and this is how I set it up, right? So I'm, I'm going through the approach like I'm using a local host and I'm connecting over wireless. So I've got my index file. Let's take a look at it. And here it's just a simple HTML file and then I have the reference right here is the URL so that when you browse to this on your iOS device it knows how to load this now check this out right here I'm referencing a local my local host installation so I'm using this uh, 192.168 you know it's a very simple uh, you know local host web server and I'm pointing to the manifest file. Now, again, if you're doing this on, say, a public web server, you can certainly reference that, you know, if you have a public uh, 
URL, real simple. The key is this has to point to the right place. So just keep that in mind. You have to understand however you're deploying it, make sure it's pointing to the right place. All right, so that's fairly simple. And here's my IPA file. Now, the key to making this work is it, your file must be signed with an ad hoc provisioning profile and your distribution certificate. Check out my other tutorials that show how to create the distribution certificate, how to create the ad hoc provisioning profile. But the key is if you don't sign it with the ad hoc provisioning profile and distribution key, then it will fail. So keep that in mind. What does this mean? If you're signing it that way for ad hoc distribution, then you're specifically targeting the devices that are in your device list in your uh, provisioning portal in your iOS developer account. So what I'm showing you is how to post an app online that a person who has their device on that list can then download the app and test it and all that good stuff. All right, let's take a look at the manifest file. Go ahead and edit. We're going to look at this. So this is the bare bones, right? So here, I'll jump down real quick. Here's the sample manifest file. Again, what I've done is I've stripped it down so that I'm just looking at the required elements. So let's walk through the required elements. We have some things like, you know, it has to describe the kind of uh, package, which happens to be software, and then the URL. Now, this again, I'm pointing to a local host, local host uh, installation. So I'm connecting over my own local area network and I'm seeing this 192.168.02. Uh, address and then of course I put it in a builds folder and then this is the name of the IPA file right very simple now the next part is very important when you built your IPA file you have an app ID a bundle ID this must match the ad hoc provisioning profile app ID that you created so that you're associating the bundle ID with the IPA so that's very key. So make sure you have that. And then of course, there's some things like, you know, hey, this is the title displayed when it downloads. There you go, very simple. All right, so we've got everything. Let's take a look at our, again, I'm doing a local host type thing. I've got these three files are needed for it to work. I have an index file so that when I go to this URL, I'll see that, I'll see a link, I'll click the link It'll load this manifest, which will then prompt the device to install the IPA. All right, now let's jump over to the device and see this working. So here's my device, and notice I'm not connected over USB, right? The key is you have to make sure that you're on the same wireless. If you're doing the local web server, like I'm doing right now, make sure you're on the Wi-Fi network and you're on the same network as your uh, web server. Now, very straightforward. If even if you have a public website, of course, then you can do it over 3G. Um, depending on the file size, there's still that limitation on 3G downloads. Although it should work pretty well, you can test that out. But for our purposes, we're doing the local host web server. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Safari. Now I've already got the URL here and again I'm pointing to my local server and it's a very simple page. Obviously you can put a lot more information on there. If you're doing this for you know some beta testers across the country you know you want to maybe put a little more information, describe what the build is, all that, whatever information you want to put there and then you have the link. So I'm going to go ahead and click that link and it says hey do you want to install this app and I say for sure, and I click install. All right, now it begins to download it, and it's installing it, and there you go, look at that. Hey, 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 I've got my app, nice. It's a square, sweet. Okay, so very simple, very straightforward. Now the key, what makes it work? You have to sign your IPA, um, your IPA file using an ad hoc provisioning profile and your distribution certificate. 
If you don't know how to create those, watch the other tutorials where I show how to create those. And make sure you uh, use an index file that points to the manifest plist using that special URL. Make sure you have the information in your manifest plist correct so that it references the IPA with the correct app ID. I'm going to post these two files, the index and manifest files, on my website so you can get a sample of it and you can, of course, fill in the information uh, accordingly. So again, very straightforward and it's something that you can use to quickly install an app for testing without using iTunes. Alright, thanks for watching.